I've stepped up my test motor to this 120 100 uh, 70 kV motor that I've had for quite a while never had a use for it uh, it's known as a very difficult motor to run as it has only eight micro henries of inductance face to face and very low resistance these are four gauge leads I'm using eight gauge to go into them because that's what I got right now so I've been playing around with the VESC tool software and testing out field oriented control tried high frequency injection BLDC uh, out of all of them so far the field oriented control works the best I'm running at a bus voltage of 30 volts so uh, this is where I'm at now I got the scope hooked up so that we can see what's going on with the frequency and the current I actually have so the cyan trace here is the PWM the blue trace is the phase current and that is being read by a Rogowski coil uh, sitting on the phase lead so here we go let's see how the uh, field oriented control startup goes pretty responsive let's uh, try whacking it wide open throttle no problem and let's watch what's doing on the scope and stop it. There we go. So I'm running at uh, 50 kilohertz PWM right now because of the, the low inductance of this motor. And let's find the current peaks here. So there you can see the current peak, current peak, the triangular wave uh, on the blue trace, and that is at 10 amps per division. So we're looking at about mm, 20 amps peak to peak on that. So as your switching frequency goes up, you have less demand on the DC link caps. These two DC link caps here are good for, they're rated for 26 amps RMS each. Uh, so this setup would be able to do about 50 amps. RMS on the ripple current, which is plenty for what this is set up to do. Uh, PC board is just a test, so it's not, a, it's going to probably be uh, a four ounce copper, uh, six layers right now because uh, just prototype it's only two ounce top and bottom and then the inner fours are, are half uh, testing on this I got about 40 amps continuous DC during testing so probably won't be able to exceed much of that unfortunately with the motor here right now I don't have a good way to place much load on it so I have to wait until some parts come in so I can couple the shaft to a different setup I might actually end up getting a second one of these motors just to run them together and then build a second controller for regen so that I have a dyno. I also have some smaller motors coming for the same purpose. So let's see how slow it runs. Oh, it's a little tough to control on the throttle. That's pretty slow. Got pretty good control. Can't really load it down, unfortunately. But I can't hold my hand on it and start it up because it'll just torque me out. That's the best I can do for load right now is just whacking it wide open throttle where it draws like, I think it's around 10 amps phase current. 
If I pop over here. Here's a sample of what the phase current looks like when I'm uh, running it at about half throttle. Looks like it's pulling uh, right around 10 amps phase, which is pretty much in line with what I'm seeing up here. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, everything's pretty much working as expected so far. Uh, the identification of the motor does not work the greatest. It actually comes out in here in FOC to, I know this motor is around nine micro henries because I've measured it with a meter. But during the automatic detection, it actually only comes out to about a third of that, a little over three. So I actually had to put it in manually and then uh, hit the calc apply old and that set it up so that the gains got me pretty much where they needed to be. I think I tweaked them just a tiny bit, just experimenting. Never really saw much difference over in the advance here you can see I'm running 50 kilohertz and I'm going to move this Rogowski coil over to the one of the phase legs here so that we can sample the drain source switching time and look at the overshoot that it experiences. There is the Rogowski coil going around a low side drain or source rather. It's a source leg not a drain leg. Here's a previous run, so you can see there's the noise sitting on there at 30 volts. Get a little bit of overshoot. There is no snubber on this. However, the this particular PCB type layout has a very low inductance. I've measured this. It's only around 20 nanohenries of parasitic inductance on there. As you can see, I have some spots for some of the snubber caps, and then I have uh, positions underneath here to add on diodes and resistors for the RCD snubbers if I need them. Here's the running of the motor. There you can see the motor's back EMF waveform. I'm going to have to pause this and hit the stop button so I can capture where it looks like it's noisiest. All right, so here are the noisiest signals that I was able to capture. So let's go in and take a look and see what kind of overshoot we have. Let's look for the peaks. Right about there, it looks like it's on the top ones. So yeah, gonna have some ring. And there we go, we're at uh, 10 volts per division, running 30 volts. So that peak is sitting up there. Here's the 30, 20 volts over. So it's a 50 volt peak. That is the worst case scenario with a 30 volt DC bus. But that is only maybe what is the current there? 10 amps. So we'll see what happens as the load goes up. So one thing I wanted to talk about was the switching time versus switching frequency. So here we have a nice clean transition and uh, see the rise time there. Down here it says uh, 147, we're at 100 nanoseconds. It's more like 200 nanoseconds uh, rise time on that. In double pulse testing, it should be about 300 nanoseconds, but it varies once you start putting, uh, running a motor on it. What I've done to slow down, I was getting sub 100 nanosecond switching times, was I added a little 10 nanofarad gate to source cap to each one of these phases, and that slowed it down from. Uh, from just under 100 nanoseconds to 300 nanoseconds and really cleaned it up. Didn't notice any detrimental effects. So it's still looking pretty good. 
So that is the switching time. So switching frequency is the period in between here and here. One of the advantages of running the higher PWM is it lowers the demand of current from your DC link caps. And I'll demonstrate that. All right, so I just ran the motor and you can see the peaks there. And that is what I showed before. I actually ended up moving the Rogowski coil back over to the phase lead to better show what's going on. And as you can see, it is about 10 amps peak to peak. So I'm gonna slow this down to 25 kilohertz now so you can see what happens to the current. All right, this is the result of 25 kilohertz PWM. And as you can see, it is now about 20 amps peak to peak. So now my caps have to deliver more current because of the time in between the pulses. So one of the advantages to switching faster is being able to get uh, lower demand needed from your uh, DC link caps. The trade-off being that you lose more in switching losses. So, and that relates to this time here, how long it takes you to turn on and off. So when you switch faster, time-wise, from drain to source, you end up wasting less power being dissipated in the MOSFET due to switching. But the trade-off is the amount of noise you generate. So if you have a high parasitic inductance on your DC bus, you're going to get a higher turn-off overshoot as you're exciting it a lot more with a faster signal. So slowing down to 300 nanoseconds helps reduce that. Um, as a counter to that, you can also run snubbers if you can't get a good layout going on your first try. I've built several controllers already, so I kind of have a pretty good feel on what I'm doing. What I'll do now is I'll slow it down even more so you'll we'll see what happens to the current demand. I'll go down to 10 kilohertz. So here we go. This is 10 kilohertz PWM, and as you can see, there is a dramatically higher current usage in between those switching periods. Um, what does that come out to? That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half divisions. So it shows the relationship between the PWM frequency you're running and how much current demand there is and how the relationship ties in to the inductance of the motor. Now, if this was a higher inductance motor, those peaks would not be shooting up as high because the time constant of the motor would be lower. So the current would rise a lot slower. But this is a low inductance motor, and that's one of the things with low inductance motors you have to be worried about is, in the, the worst case scenario is a, a locked rotor where this thing can't turn and you feed it the highest current. You need to be able to make sure that you don't uh, overshoot your current that your, mo that your controller can handle. And that also comes down to processing speed. So most of the time, the PID control loops, all the sensing is tied in with the PWM in order for the samplings to happen in the middle of the PWM period when it's not as noisy. What I'll do now is I'll uh, run through and so you can see some of the different issues with lower PWM and higher PWM. So this is 10 kilohertz PWM. And sometimes it has trouble starting up. See, there it goes backwards. A little stutter backwards. And eventually it kicks in. That's me taking the throttle almost wide open. Very distinctive noise. Now I'm going to switch that up to 25. And wide open. Starts right up. No, oh, not that time though. Let's see if it'll hang up on me again here. Nope. There we go. 
I have not seen that when I'm running over, I think it was about 30 kilohertz, so let me go up to 50 now. The general rule of thumb is the lower inductance the motor, the higher switching frequency you should be running. And if you think you're going to run into a locked rotor scenario, like on an electric skateboard, electric bike, then it is good to run a slightly higher frequency. Most of those motors are higher inductance. Um, it's only when you start really getting down into the low stuff, lower than 20 um, microhenries, that the motors start really benefiting from running the higher PWM frequencies. There we go, now we're at 50 kilohertz. <laughs> A lot smoother sounding. Less startup issues too. Well, that's all for tonight. Hopefully this weekend my parts show up for my little dyno build. I'll 3D print. This is, just so you know, this, this motor weighs and it's four kilos is 16 or not 16 it's uh eight or nine pounds and uh i 3d printed this motor plate and stand fix the lighting there a little bit there we go in order to bench test this thing so it doesn't jump around because there's a lot of torque there and then i just double stuck tape it down you can see the tape right here if i can focus on it Just double stick it down keep it from jumping around it's important to not have this thing hopping around i don't want to break my glass or break anything else there's a lot of expensive gear sitting here on the table uh, radowski coils are not cheap they're close to a thousand dollars each differential probes those things are like five hundred dollars each the adapter to run the differential probes on my scope actually the scope is the lowest cost piece of equipment on the bench here Anyways, uh, hopefully in the next video we'll show some of the dyno usage.